friends, Homegrown Big here in the kitchen. Uh, this is part of the ongoing fall foraging little series that I'm doing. And I wanted to talk about ways to preserve mushrooms. So most of the mushrooms that you get and you forage, and I would say probably the same is true for most plants, you can dehydrate and you can get big mason jars and dehydrate them and then rehydrate them in water, broth, marinades and then cook with them. However, chanterelles, which are the premium Northwest mushroom, doesn't do well dehydrated. And it's because it's a, it's a primitive mushroom, it's an older mushroom, and its molecular structure is such that when it loses water, it won't take water back on very well. So when you dehydrate it, it just, if you try to rehydrate it, ends up becoming this chewy, yucky mess. So one of the best ways to preserve them is to do a pickling and canning. And this is great. Um, it doesn't take up extra carbon emissions by freezer space. It can last a really long time, especially if you pressure can. And uh, it can be used in a lot of different ways. It can be served with salads. It can be um, put into soups. It can be put into stir fries. So it's really versatile and you can pickle with different flavorings. So let me show you what it looks like, what the process is, and you can do it too. The first step to getting this done, as you might well know, is cleaning. And uh, it's really important to not wash wild mushrooms too heavily. Like sometimes there's some dirt in there and you just have to give them a bit of a quick rinse. Um, but you really want to try to keep them dry as possible and use a mushroom brush. You can buy these on the web and that'll get all your dirt and your uh, pine needles off and uh, clean them up and then prepare them for dry saute. Okay, now we are ready to do a dry saute. So you want to just get these in a no stick pan or um, something of the variety. You don't put any butter in with these. Uh, it's really great if you keep the little buttons intact. They're always fun to uh, have pickled and see in the jar. And uh, you want to put a little salt in, just a little bit. It helps It helps uh, pull out the, the water out of the mushrooms. And you got to pull the water out to, to preserve them properly. And then I put in garlic powder because I like garlic. And then uh, I put them in the oven at 400 until the water's cooked off. I'll show you. This is the mushrooms um, simmering with the pickling spices and seasoning. And uh, I put the recipe down below in the information section, but you do this for about five minutes after you dry saute them. And that gets that nice flavoring right in there and then you can jar them up. Now I've got some fresh oregano in there, garlic, seasoning, um, pickling, and a bit of uh, caraway, peppercorns, and garlic wine. So this is gonna be super yummy. All right, now we're getting ready to can up the mushrooms. And one of the things that I like to do is just put in a couple of fresh red onion. Gives it a really nice flavor and pickled onions are actually pretty yummy to eat. So, a few red onion, and then it's nice to have one of these. Boom. Oh, I wish you could smell this. It's absolutely delicious. So excited. And I already did a batch of these and tried this, and they're amazing. They're really amazing. All right, so now I'm just gonna get to work jarring these up. All right, so we finished up the canning, boom. Ended up with about a dozen of these. Each one of these jars, the smaller jars, is about a pound of mushrooms. Uh, chanterelles really hold a lot of water. So that's what I end up with. I've got about 20 of these now, and probably will have more, I'll probably have time to get out for one more excursion at least. And I also got this huge jar of these late oysters. And I wanted to talk about 
this real briefly because as you get started with foraging, um, there's three things that you need to know. You need to know the habit and habitat. So when do the mushrooms come and where do they come to? What elevation? What type of woods? And you need to be able to identify them. So my rules with foraging is that I only eat things that I'm 99.9% .9 sure I have a positive ID. And when I'm out getting things that I know for sure, I take a lot of photos and I take a lot of observations of things that are new to me. And then I spend time researching those uh, later on. So also a good way to get involved with a local club or society where others have experience can mentor you. And then um, number three is not just having the positive ID, but knowing how to preserve and how to cook. So we talked a little bit about how like some mushrooms you really can't dehydrate. Um, but in the case of these late oysters, which I found quite a few of, and I'll probably get a bunch more. These are a winter mushroom, so when all the other mushrooms start fading out, normally these keep rolling. Um, and a lot of people will say that these aren't particularly good eating, and uh, my thought is, is that they don't know how to prepare them. So these are actually a really amazing mushroom. Um, I consider them a choice edibility. They have a uh, molecular structure in them that has sh been shown to um, fight tumors and fight cancer. So these not only are good food, but they have a medicinal quality as well. And I would say that any uh, choice food is actually let food be thy medicine. Uh, medicine, medicine as well, but, but they need to be cooked in a certain way. So a lot of people are used to cooking store mushrooms where they just throw them in the pan and then they throw in a bunch of other stuff and garlic and oil and everything like that. But there are a number of mushrooms that need to be dry sauteed. And that means that you don't put anything in the pan until you cook these completely with nothing. <clears throat> so um, this sets off a type of chemical reaction that changes the food. And without getting too far into it, um, I would say that with the internet and with so much information, they do a bunch of research about how to best prepare whatever it is that you're collecting. So after you draw sa dry saute a mushroom like this, and chanterelles actually really require dry sauteing as well, then you add in your other stuff. And this changes the molecular structure, the flavor, the biochemical reactions, and, and everything about cooking is really biochemistry. So uh, with that, I am ending this video and I will have more to come, but I would just like to say that the forest provides and um, we don't need everything from the store. And the more that we take from our environment, the less we put into carbon allocation, to packaging, to stuff that can't be recycled, into garbage that's piling up, into using excessive fossil fuels to ship things around and it's really important as a species that we recognize this and hold on to some of our traditional food crafts and uh, wild foods as well. They're healthy and they're better for the environment. And that's all I got to say on this. We'll see you next time.